Hi everyone, let's talk about Scrumpy, which I just did a full two-player playthrough of. You can see that in the description if you haven't seen that yet. This is just what I think about it, if you would like to hear about that. It's on Kickstarter right now, but bear in mind, not just that I like the Kickstarter videos, I was paid to make this video, but I've been kind of hyped, I've been primed for Scrumpy for years now. If you dig back to my Essen video, or no, my UK Games Expo video from like 2017, I think. It's on there as a you know preliminary prototype. The game has come along massively since then, but just the idea of the deck building and taking all of these actions, I was really excited for it then. And now it's got all of its you know full artwork, even at this prototype stage. I am so excited for it. Uh, well. I've played the you know the basic game, the basic setup of it. It's going to have uh, even more in the final version. But from the cards that I have, from the two-player version that I have right now, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I think quite different, excitingly different from other deck builders in that, yeah, it's it's not like you are starting out with this deck and trying to desperately improve it to get these combos off every uh, round. It's instead that you are trying to manage it as best that you can. And your your basic workers that are, you know, the, the least effective by the time the, the game gets going, you get your skilled workers, your master workers, they are always useful because you know, one, one thing that I love about it is that you have that second reaction of being able to discard your workers, uh, only your basic workers have uh, resources in the corners of them, being able to discard them for that resource and the the one of the fundamental things of the game that I love that's you know it's all multi-use cards that you are drawing cards to be most of the resources in the game everything except coins and so your deck is potentially being locked up maybe that's a good thing if you are you know storing up cards that aren't that useful to you anymore but especially when you are drawing the most of the time from your deck it could be a card that you are desperate to use is going to end up you know, stuck as an apple or something for a while. You can always look and, ha and see what is uh, it, making up those resources right now. But there is always that risk. You can play cards from your hand to do that, but you are losing the effects of those cards that at worst you could be playing for that second reaction to get the you know the the couple of apples the the extra coin that you desperately need to take the action that you really want there is a lot of variety just from these vendors that i have here the ones that just came out in the setup for the playthrough were all about getting more resources getting more wood or getting more apples but there is say you know the bar that is really easy to sell things to they just want one barrel or one beer but you've got to take an idle layabout every time you sell something to there or places that will get you uh, trees for your orchard or get you uh, let you draw more cards there are so many ways to get what you want in this depending on how the setup has come out depending on the order of the the workers that come out and in a two player game you are limiting the the pool of skilled workers as well so depending on what's come out in your game and what order they've come out it will start to shape your gameplay as well as those vendors that are available as well as the goals that everyone is shooting for you know you can still go for the public goals it's just you know an extra point for the person that manages to do it first but just because it's something that you need to have rather than things that you need to give up they can often be done on the way to doing something that you really want to although a lot of them except like like coins they're always useful. You can never have too many of them, but you have to watch out. You know, are you going too far into trying to get a load of wood that you don't necessarily have a use for right now, unless you have a trader or something that you can swap it to apples instead, which is apples always great, always can be used for cider, but uh, having too many barrels can be a hindrance to you, especially early on. You know, the, the management of your resources in this, it's not just that you want as much as possible all the time, because it's locking up your cards, potentially those key cards, as I mentioned, depending on what has come out there. And you've got to have a plan for what you want to do with it as well. It's great that it's uh, all useful at the end. It can all be turned into coins. It can all be turned into some points at the end of the game. But you, know, you, you don't know when that end is quite going to come. So unless you, know, you get all the way to that final round. So you have to have a plan for where it's going to go. And that's you know another second reaction as well. So, oh dear, what a horrible part <laughs> I gave myself there. Uh, if uh, you are going to be selling to a vendor as well, which you can only do one at a time. So especially if you 
you've got a load of cider and you are just ending up selling it to the person that wants one at a time because all the other slots are full or that's all you have right now. It's going to take you lots of turns and those secondary actions can't be used then for discarding cards for their resources to get you around to the actions that you want the most as well. Your deck is going to be improving as the game goes on as you would expect from uh, other deck builders as well but so are your actions too. You have the uh, beautiful thing that's in something like Scythe where your cubes need to go out as you make deliveries, as you meet goals but they are going to enhance your overseer actions that are another way of of, you know, I, I didn't quite manage to do this thing. I didn't quite get these cards that I needed this time. Oh, well, why not draw some more cards? Do you want to roll the forager dice to try and get some of the resources that you need and upgrade that so that you can re-roll it? Or do you want to just get some more money to be able to freely turn uh, some apples into cider once around? But then if you get the cards to let you do more overseer actions, it can all pile on top and you can end up with these uh, great combos. But it's the kind of cultivation of your workforce, the management of that deck that is the key thing here. And yeah, it feels very, very different to other... You know, I'm just excited as soon as I hear deck builder generally. But I think it's a lovely combination of uh, deck building, the freedom to discard basically your hand for useful things as long as you uh, save that secondary action for it. A really useful worker placement spot. All of the actions on that Overseer are useful at one time or another. Great competition. I've only played it at two players. There's a lockdown. There's only two of us. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been a great two-player game and I imagine it would scale up really well. But yeah, that's just hypothesis, isn't it? We're not going to get to play games for forever this country stuck this way <laughs> let's forget about that though let's talk about scrumpy i'm really really excited for it it's a really fantastic production just from you know i've got you know paste up cards and uh, printed out cheats and stuff all the artwork is there uh, the the tree meeples are there but uh, it should give you a great idea as to what the final thing looks like i think it's got a really nice style to it it is looking beautiful and sleek and i can't wait to see its final polished shiny beautiful version I love Scrumpy. I told you that at the beginning, though, really, what we were expecting from the rest of this video. I love Scrumpy. I want to play it some more. I want the finished thing. Do you want to have a look at Scrumpy? There is a Kickstarter page linked in the description. It would have been in the corner of the screen earlier on. If you'd like to go and have a look at that, see all of the final stuff, see what uh, Paul is planning for the Kickstarter edition of the game, go and have a look at that page. If you still haven't seen the playthrough yet, it's linked in the description as well. It's great seeing the game in action, isn't it? I think so anyway. Have a look at that too. There are hundreds of videos on this channel at this point. Have a look at any of them if you would like to, or spend your day however you would like to. Go and have a cup of tea and put your feet up, and then put one of the videos on, right? Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.